Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at an Asper Planeswalker Super Friends deck as it's known, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and we're featuring a ton of new Planeswalkers from Phyrexia All Will Be One, as well as two copies of the Iker Moon Gauntlet, a 3-mana artifact, says Planeswalkers you control have the ability for zero loyalty to proliferate, which will essentially add one loyalty to every Planeswalker on the battlefield, maybe even add an extra counter to a Saga, like Urza assembles the Titans, so we can use multiple chapters in the same turn. And then we can also potentially minus 12 one of our Planeswalkers to take an extra turn after this one, which can also be very powerful if we ever get to it. And then whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we can choose a counter on target permanent and put an additional counter of that kind on that permanent, so it can also maybe speed up the process of getting to 12 loyalty. So hopefully we'll get to see that minus 12 effect in action. Then looking at our Planeswalkers, we've got two copies of Liliana of the Veil at 3 mana to make the opponent sacrifice a creature starting out, and then can slowly maybe tick up making each player discard a card. And then the minus 6 ultimate can also be very achievable thanks to our Iker Moon Gauntlet, putting additional loyalty counters on it. Then we've got a 1 of Kaito to make an unblockable ninja, maybe draw and discard a few times. And then a Jace can be cast for 3 mana and 2 life, or we can cast it for 4 mana, in which case it enters with a full 5 loyalty as opposed to 3, the plus 1 shrinking opposing creatures down, and then a minus 2 can maybe draw a few extra cards while milling the opponent. Then at 4 mana, I've got 2 copies of the Wandering Emperor to exile tapped creatures, make samurai tokens, Got Sorin to make life-linking flying vampires, draw additional cards with a plus one, and then Teferi who slows the sunset, especially powerful alongside the Celestis, as we can untap our artifact and a land with a plus one ability, giving us additional mana to potentially double spell and cast our more expensive spells. And then we've got Kaito Dancing Shadow, which can also draw additional cards with a zero ability, and the plus one can also prevent a creature from attacking or blocking, unlikely to make use of the passive ability in this deck. And then the minus two can also make a death touching drone if we need to apply a bit of pressure. And then at five mana, there's Teferi Temporal Pilgrim, can make spirit tokens that grow over time as we draw additional cards. And then the zero ability can, of course, also just draw, which will place additional counters onto all our spirit tokens. And then Vraska Betrayal Sting is one of the more important planeswalkers in this deck, arguably, as the zero ability allows us to draw a card at the cost of one life and proliferate, so that can add extra loyalty to all our planeswalkers, as well as potentially an additional counter onto our saga, which we'll get to in a second. And then Vraska, similar to Jace, can be cast for 5 mana 2 life as opposed to 6 mana, in which case it enters with 4 loyalty as opposed to 6, and then a minus 2 gives us more removal, turning an opposing creature into a treasure. And then a minus 9 ultimate, if we get to it, can also win us the game if we can proliferate afterwards, giving the opponent 10 poison counters. Then we have two copies of the Eternal Wanderer, which can potentially wipe the board with a minus 4, leaving the opponent with a single creature, the zero ability making double striking samurai, and the plus 1 is also quite versatile, can just exile opposing tokens for good. And then a 1 of Kaya Intangible Slayer, only a 1 of since we cannot put in play with our second chapter from Urza Assembles, since it's limited to Planeswalkers with mana value 6 or less, but it's still very powerful if we can get it in play, especially with the help of Teferi and the Celestis, we can maybe ramp it out. And then the plus 2 draining the opponent for 3, gaining 3 life, the 0 ability drawing extra cards, and the minus 3 can exile opposing creatures and enchantments, turning them into 1-1 one -one creatures with the same abilities. And then going over our non-Planeswalker cards, We've got a bit of spot removal with cut down, two copies of Gopher Throats and a Shieldred's Edict, especially good at dealing with opposing planeswalkers, which we can otherwise struggle with. And then the Celestis for a bit of ramp, we've got our Gauntlet, and then two copies of Temporary Lockdown, which has been very important as well, especially against the aggressive soldier decks, and can also potentially exile an opposing Reckoner Bankbuster, which we also don't have a great way of answering. And then we have two copies of Depopulate as a 4-mana sweeper. And then at 6-mana we've got two copies of Farewell, which can exile various permanents, leaving our Planeswalkers alive and well. And then at 5-mana Urza assembles the Titans as one of the key cards in the deck, can read ahead to any chapter if we want to, but if we want to get the most value we start from chapter 1, letting us scry 4 and then reveal the top card of our library. If it's a Planeswalker we can put it into our hand, so we get immediate card advantage. On chapter 2 we can put a Planeswalker card with mana value 6 or less from our hand onto the battlefield, so we can cheat one of our more expensive Planeswalkers in play for free, like maybe a Vraska or an Eternal Wonder, but even just putting a 4-mana Planeswalker in play is already very strong. 
And then on the final chapter, we may activate the loyalty abilities of Planeswalkers we control twice this turn rather than once. So that's usually the turn where we really pull ahead and overwhelm the opponent in card advantage. And then having both Vraska and Gauntlet in the deck means we can sometimes place an extra counter on our Saga to activate it twice in one turn. So let's say we start from Chapter 2, we can put a Vraska in play for free, use his ability to draw and proliferate, put an extra counter on Urza Assembles, and immediately let us activate our Planeswalkers twice this turn, which means we can activate Vraska a second time, as well as all our other Planeswalkers that may already be in play. And then a mana base is pretty straightforward, just a lot of mana fixing here with our tower, various dual lands, and a few channel lands for added interaction. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. No blue mana and no early interaction means we'll have to mulligan. This is a bit better. And then... Probably get rid of Vraska as much as it pains me, just keep hitting our land drops and then hope to find more expensive planeswalkers along the way. Okay, turn on Rock Priest, we can answer nicely with Edicts, assuming no second creature shows up. A green White and a Singer, okay. So Green White, Poison Aggro. Pass and plan to Edicts. And then next turn Jace can shrink an opposing creature down without taking extra poison from the Rot Priests, should they choose to keep it. And our opponent did. So they might have ways to protect it in hand. Hopefully we'll find a Sweeper at some point to get rid of the Rot Priest, although they might have a Tyvar Stand in hand to give it Hexproof. For now, this will prevent taking additional Toxic. And then Urza Assembles is looking good. Sadly, cannot put Kaya in place since it's limited to mana value 6. So 7's a little bit too powerful otherwise, I guess. Defector Might, also a good one. And for 2 mana, could be Skrelv's Hive. Nope, Ossification to Exile or Planeswalker. Okay, that's dealt with. Lockdown would be one of our better draws. Exile the opponent's entire board, get our Jace back. Cutdown is still useful, although I suspect a Tyvar stand is in the opponent's hand. So in that case, Kaito can just draw. Next turn, die to Tyvar stand, pumping the opponent's creature. If they don't want to go for the toxic damage, I think that's fine. And then if they use Tyvar stands, that opens up Cutdown as an option. But we also just want to hit our land drops for Urza Assembles. Okay, there's our land. So next turn we might go for Chapter 1 to dig for another Planeswalker. And hope not to take too much damage in the meantime. Another Slaughter Singer would also take out Kaito. Okay, 3 mana. So this could be a Tyvar Stand for 2. Yep. Get a Poison from Rock Priest. And then a Rot Priest can attack us while Skrelv takes out Kaito. So, all according to plan so far. Another Kaito we can put in play next turn. But uh, yeah, at 4 poison I think we can afford to start from chapter 1. Since I'm not confident we can win with uh, current tools in hand. But I'm maybe holding a second Tyvar stand. So finding something like a lockdown would be ideal, and there it is. So for now, probably don't have time for another Urza Assembles. Lockdown will get rid of the opponent's entire board, get our Jace back. And then do we want to reveal a Wandering Emperor or a Liliana? Liliana might be better, although Wandering Emperor also gets around the Rod Priest ability, but Liliana also gets around another Tyvar stand. So maybe reveal Liliana then draw Lockdown, and then Emperor's probably a decent follow-up. So next turn I would just Lockdown, and then uh, put in like a Kaito for free. Sure. They may be playing around Liliana next turn, 
not expecting the lockdown. Could also start plussing Liliana. So we have a lot of options. So two more poison up to six. Opponent passes. Yeah, I think we put Kaito in play as opposed to Liliana. Although Liliana discards is certainly a decent option. Can discard Kaya, which we're nowhere close to casting. And then I should plus before playing Lockdown to give them less information. And for once it's not like... Don't overthink things. Opponent was holding a land since they knew about Liliana coming up. And then now Lockdown is going to be pretty devastating. Can't protect with Tyvar stand. Get Jace back and still have a cutdown available. And Jace can minus. Okay, pass it back. Just need to try and close out the game in a timely fashion. Another Rot Priest. We could cut down or we could minus two Liliana so we don't take any poison. And another ossification. Yeah, minus two Liliana is probably safer. Although they might get rid of Liliana here. Which makes sense. So in that case, do we cut down Rock Priest here? Sure. And see if their last card's another Tyvor stand. It is. Okay, so one potentially left in the deck. Up to eight poison. The fairy was a nice pickup. So we can activate our planeswalkers twice this turn. If I to fairy untap two lands, I can still play Kaito and then activate Kaito twice. And then Jace can certainly minus two once. Find another Urza assembles, okay. So how does that change things? Urza assembles. I can start from chapter 2, put in a Planeswalker. Or I can still go with a Teferi line, which I honestly kind of like too here. And then next turn Urza assembles again. And then Teferi's gonna have a ton of loyalty. Next turn I could also tap the Rot Priest using Teferi and then exile it with the Wandering Emperor's minus two. And then Kaito can make a ninja and plus probably. Pretty happy with my hands. Even though cut down would be an answer to Rot Priest. Okay, and then a ninja can enable Kaito next turn as we keep drawing. Opponent passes, so we don't have to assemble the titans if we don't want to, but I can put in play Emperor, which seems fine. So let me start by attacking. And then we can float some mana, plus the fairy. And then potentially draw with Kaito. Ben and Meyer. Jace can plus. A Rod Priest down. And then next turn we can activate all our planeswalkers twice. You can be made to obey. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is pretty decent. Got our tool against aggressive decks. And then Urza assembles to take over the late game. Well, let's see what we're up against here. Humans. Okay. Turn on officer. So lockdown is going to be very important. Opponent could delay it with a Thalia. And yeah, opponent's got to turn to Thalia off a Razor Verge Thicket of all things. Not a card I was uh, expecting. So opponent's with 
a slightly different build of soldiers. Okay, can pass with cut down up. We'll see if we want to cut down Thalia or maybe a different soldier that doesn't get exiled by lockdown. So do we take four or kill Thalia now? I think I take four. There are some soldiers at three mana that we can still cut down. Okay, Skrelv. That's fine. And then we'll just take our turn and cast a lockdown. Okay, so now I've got an empty board, about to play Urza Assembles. So it looks like a Naya human or legendary deck. Adversary we can cut down if they don't pay for it, and our opponent did not. Okay, so now I guess I'm liking cut down the officer, which has an activated ability, and then Jace just shrinks down the adversary, and then wait on Urza Assembles until next turn. Possible they have a Tyvar stand for protection, they don't. For mana Jace. We'll shrink down the adversary. Siege Veteran? Yeah, that's the creature we were hoping to see on turn 3. Pumps adversary so it can hit for 1. Wandering Emperor can exile Adversary. Could also start from Chapter 2, put Wandering Emperor in play for free, exile Adversary. Or I can just start from Chapter 1, plus Jace on Adversary. And then Jace is technically still alive next turn. And we get a bit more value for more Saga. I think that's fine. Okay, find Teferi and Vraska. So, probably keep both, and which one do we show them? Probably to Fairy, gives them a bit less information. And then, probably put Vraska in play for free, and then I can still play to Fairy and Emperor after to Fairy on Tapsa Land. So, we'll have all our planeswalkers in play ready for the final chapter. At least, that's the hope. So we're looking good. And I guess by proliferating with Vraska, we also go to Chapter 3 right away, so we can activate all our Planeswalkers in the very same turn. Alright, so there's a lot going on here. Start with Vraska. Then we want to Teferi plus put an Emperor. Because we want to have all our Planeswalkers in play before we proliferate. Okay, now Vraska can proliferate. Including on the Saga. Activate everything twice. And then I can minus two Emperor twice, exiling Siege Veteran Adversary. Or we can just make a, an extra token here. And our opponent has seen enough. Too much value for the opponent to overcome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is reasonable. Don't really have a ton of planeswalkers, but at least lockdown and farewell should keep us alive. Facing a turn one blast soon. Points towards a more controlling strategy. Frasca was a good draw. And a Liliana. Okay, Liliana's a problem since we can't really pressure it here, so we end up ultimating before we can take over. A lockdown doesn't seem all that great at the moment. So we'll play Kaito could make a ninja. Which is unlikely to overpower Liliana, but at least we'll be a bit of a distraction. Opponent keeps plussing. Yeah, Gauntlet's gotta go. And a Trespasser. Okay, so it looks like we can at least attack Liliana. Draw with Kaito. 
take it from there. Do not touch me again. And depopulate what? is an answer to the trespasser, although also loses our only pressure for Liliana. I think it's still worth it. Next turn we can play Vraska, which can also proliferate onto Kaito and then make another ninja. Going to get another trespasser. And an evolved sleeper. Down to one card in hand, deciding whether they want a plus. They do. Okay, Emperor was nice. So we have two main options. One is Vraska, which can proliferate and draw. Kaito makes a token, still stays at one loyalty. And then the token will force Liliana to minus, otherwise we can keep her in check. Or we can flash in an Emperor end of turn to try and pressure Liliana, and then the question is what to do with Kaito. But flashing an Emperor transforms it to Knight, lets the Trespasser transform. That's not ideal. So maybe Vraska... Proliferate is a move. Fairy's nice too. It's like your defenses aren't even there. Okay, Liliana's finally gonna minus two. That buys us more time. And then now opponent can take out Vraska. And if we draw land, we can farewell, get rid of the conscript in the graveyard as well. Now Reckoner Raid can start draining. And there's our land. Okay, so farewell seems like a good starting point. And then Kaito can also draw and discard. Although I may want to farewell first. And another Kaito. Which one do we like more? So next turn I could play Teferi, untap a land. Still doesn't let me cast another 4-drop unless we draw land. Uh, Kaito can make a 2-2, two -two. Wanderer can make a 2-2, two -two. so we have a few ways of pressuring Liliana. The fairy is the only one that doesn't, but is also the only one that potentially lets me double spell next turn. That being said, Liliana is also likely to plus, so I'm only going to have one Planeswalker left. So I don't think the fairy is going to be relevant. And then we'll have to decide which Planeswalker to keep. Never mind, opponent does not plus Liliana. So they probably have a removal spell in hand, in which case uh, can discard Depopulate to Kaito. Instead of cashing it in for a 1-1. One -one. Teferi was great. So now Teferi can just draw. If her opponent maybe had an Invoke Despair as their one card, I can sacrifice Kaito and keep Teferi. And I don't feel like making a token that's going to die anyway. And now Urza Assembles is a great way to pull ahead. Opponent can start taking a Blast soon, but that's going to take a while. So now if they plus Liliana, keep Urza Assembles, and then probably keep Kaito over Emperor, Drop since it. Emperor's not quite as good if we put it in play with our Saga. Alright, so now we've got a million options. Urza Assembles could start from Chapter 1 if we're being a bit greedy. I think that's fine. Not under a ton of pressure. Find Teferi. Don't think I'll need Cut Down afterwards. And then Kaito can now make a token alongside Teferi making a token, maybe. So we finally start pressuring Liliana. Should have used Kaito before Teferi in case I had an Edict, but if they had Shieldred's Edict they would have made us sacrifice a Planeswalker by now. And then I'll keep Land in Hand to discard. One 
sacrifice a ninja to Liliana. Possible they just have another Liliana in hand too. Tenacious Underdog Blitzed, we can still block. Or we can let Kaito go so we can take out Liliana, which is maybe better at this point. And then our token's also quickly gonna grow. And then we want to make some backup tokens since we suspect another Liliana. And uh, let's put the most expensive Planeswalker in play for free. The fairy can untap a land and then still play Kaito. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough, too much value for the mono black aggro deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Turn two can Edict, turn three Celestus. Gets us on our way. Facing an aggressive white deck. It's mono white, is it poison? Okay, it looks like a poison deck. Duelist hits pretty hard. But a lockdown is now the perfect answer to the opponent's board. So, don't think we even need to use Edict. If our plan is to lock down next turn. Hopefully they play another cheap creature instead of uh, like a bloated contaminator. Now I could also still edict and then next turn I have the flexibility of playing Celestus instead of having to lock down. I think we're just gonna hope they play another cheap creature but nope there's a contaminator. I think we still want a lockdown, and then Emperor can deal with the Contaminator. Can't afford to take too much more poison. Sentry, just a 1-4. And a Crawling Horse. Okay. So I'm somewhat tempted to main phase Emperor Exile Contaminator in case her opponent is packing cards like Tyvar's Stand. What's the alternative now? Edict does not line up particularly well now that the uh, Chorus is in play. So yeah, main phase Emperor is pretty reasonable. And then if they want to take out my Emperor instead of dealing an extra poison, that's fine by me. They also have an active seed core, which can pump the chorus. Bonan does finish off our planeswalker. And seed core gets us for two extra damage. Although still the same amount of poison, which is more likely to be the deciding factor. Okay, Eternal Wanderer is pretty decent here. So Celestus, pass it back, can either cut down or edict, depending on the situation. Maybe wait for them to pump with a seed core and then cast a cut down. A rock priest is probably gonna force the issue here, put an untapped seed core for it, which is maybe the auto tapper not helping out. Yeah, I guess we'll cut down, still probably go after chorus instead of sentry, if our plan is to use our eternal wanderer, and then we can leave them with a 1-1 one -one token. Okay, Urza Assembles was a nice pickup. Cannot put Kai in play, but can put Eternal Wanderer in play. And then if we leave them with a 1-1, they can finish off Wanderer, but at least we'll still be at a healthy 6 poison as opposed to potentially being dead, which is probably worth it. And then next turn to Fairy can activate twice. This also gets around a potential Tyvar's stand. And by leaving them with a token, the Edict can also be a bit more specific in what it tries to take out. Opponent untaps. 
and I imagine they'll finish off our planeswalker here. Okay, Slaughter Singer pumps a 1 1. So we still have some work to do. The fairy who slows the sunsets. So if I play Teferi, 4 mana Teferi that is can untap land and artifact, so it essentially pays for itself. And then we can still play Temporal Pilgrim afterwards. That seems good. And then 4 mana to Fairy will help set up Kaya on the following turn. Could also play an Edict in between. But uh, yeah, don't mind making a token and then drawing while we have the third chapter. Could also make two tokens, but then we lose our Teferi. And uh, it's not impossible for them to have another sentry to exile the token. Yeah, we would go to nine poison next turn if they get rid of the spirits. But then I would still have a Teferi. And then we can try and stabilize with Kaya. Yeah, it's definitely a close one. I think I do draw. Because two, two, two tokens also wouldn't be the best blockers necessarily since the Singer's going to pump the team. Okay. Big turn coming up. There's a Sentry, as we suspected. So that's three more poison coming in, at least. Or they can decide to go after some of our Planeswalkers by pumping their creatures. They will finish off to ferry. So we're at 8 poison. Now we can play Kaya, which can exile Sentry, which exiles another creature from the opponents. So that's gonna be the play. As opposed to Sorin make a blocker and then Edict kill a non token creature. Doesn't seem nearly as good. And then we probably exile Singer, because if we exile the token and they have another sentry, I'm just dead. Whereas now, even though they would get back their uh, Singer, at least we're not dead on board. The seed core does complicate matters a little bit, since they can pump the 1-1 one -one now. So I'm most likely chumping, but we'll see if they go after Kaya or attack face. Okay, seed core pumps. Going on this, going after Kaya. So yeah, I'll jump. That allows me to minus a second time. And then we can also potentially ultimate the fairy, which will untap our land so we can edict at instant speed in the opponent's turn. Could also minus two and dig for a sweeper. Kaya could also draw for a sweeper. Question is if we can survive without necessarily needing to top deck, which would involve probably Kaya going for a minus three. I hope there's no protection spell in hand. And then Soren can make a token. And then we can keep up Edict. Minus seven might be a little greedy here. I might prefer the minus two. And then I can still play Soren and Edict, and maybe we'll find a better answer. And we have a lot of outs here, Farewell being one of them. Perfect. So now Kaya can draw while we just wipe the board. Find our gauntlet as well. Can be fun next turn. Opponent caps the card on top. So Farewell 
and we'll just hit creatures here. Pass it back. Another Rot Priest is dangerous, although Edict can get around the ability. So Gauntlet first. Now we could um, use the Fairy to untap Artifact and Lands, so I can still play Sorin and Edict. And then Kaya can keep drawing if we want to. Could also proliferate now. So, once again, have quite a few options. Let's say we proliferate with Kaya, play Sorin, counter on Teferi, then I can minus 7. And then cast Edict during the opponent's turn. That seems good. So, proliferate here. And then Sorin can also proliferate. So we don't lose Teferi, although I have another one in hand. So could just see making an extra vampire. So we actually start applying a bit of pressure. Minus seven. And then upkeep all cast edict. And counter on Sorin, which can also work up towards an ultimate. Opponent with a gift. Okay, so up to 9 poison. But the indestructible doesn't matter. And the green white toxic deck, not known for having a lot of proliferate cards. So they're gonna have to get there with another Rot Priest or comma damage, which at this point we should be able to avoid. Okay. Sequencing now. Vraska for 6 mana, maybe after playing Teferi, which can untap some more stuff. And then we want counters on Sorin. Teferi untaps. Should maybe attack first. So we can untap our token. Six mana Vraska. Counter on Sorin. Vraska will proliferate and draw. Could also set up an ultimate with Vraska and poison the opponent to death to return the favor. And then now we could uh, just deal three with Kaya. And then Sorin is another uh, 13 damage here. So it doesn't quite kill the opponent, but gets close. So I guess for now we can just uh, proliferate once again and go for it next turn. So yeah, we can win in a multitude of ways next turn. All the way from Vraska ultimates, proliferate up to 10 poison. Or uh, deal 13 with Sorin after attacking, or plusing Kaya to deal additional damage. I'm not sure if I missed lethal right now. Very much possible when you have so many options with a gauntlet. Poseju, ooh, getting back lockdown. Yeah, that could have actually done it here uh, if it weren't for go for the throats. So we have to be very careful. Was not expecting Boseju, but that makes sense. Depopulates. So opponent's probably going to activate Skrelv on the Duelists, giving Pro Black. And then in response we go for the Throat. Alright, gotta hope they didn't draw another Protection spell here, since that could be game over. And it's not like I could have cast the Go for the Throat and Upkeep, since Skrelv is an artifact. And if we go for Duelist, they just name Black with Skrelv to protect against it. Did our opponent actually top deck? Oh wow, can't believe it, Gaia's Gift. 
Yeah, I guess uh, opponents got there in the end. What an epic game. Incredibly close. Not sure if we had a better sequence last turn to prevent that from happening, but uh, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems decent enough. Just need a third land to cast our Celestus, hopefully get our Gauntlet going alongside Urza Assembles, which can be fun. And then can discard Celestus to another Celestus. Okay, land is good. Facing turn one planes. Soldiers, okay, Soldier Tribal with Denik. So, could cut down right now. Just gonna play Celestus Keep Up Cut Down, and most likely wait for a scarier soldier to show up since Denik is manageable. Alright, Veteran. Might be worth taking out since that deals a lot of damage. And then Jace can at least deal with Denik early on. Although we could assemble the Titans now, since we're not under a ton of pressure, start from Chapter 1. Seems more man efficient. Okay, that's a lot of planeswalkers. So, wonder we can put in play for free next turn, but don't necessarily want to show it to them, so that's maybe second. And then what if we show them Wandering Emperor so they maybe don't even attack? And then Vraska afterwards. Although I wouldn't be able to cast Vraska in time to necessarily proliferate the Assembles the Titans, but I probably want to take my time to get more Planeswalkers in play first. So reveal Emperor, then draw Eternal Wanderer next turn, which we can put in play for free, and then Vraska, the follow-up. I think that makes sense. Opponent's got a Sky Strike Officer, and then it's still attacking. Okay, so put this in play, and then we could plus one on the Sky Strike, shrink down Danik with Jace, or I can just exile it with Wandering Emperor. Um, yeah, that prevents the opponent from attacking with Officer, making an extra token, and then we can maybe minus four later. Could also minus four now get rid of Officer and then Emperor gets rid of Denik. And then there's an empty board going into next turn, although I won't be able to minus four again anytime soon. And it's also fine. And then next turn I can play five mana Vraska. And proliferate. Another Sky Strike. Okay, so Vraska can draw twice potentially. And the opponent has given up. We could just exile the officer as well with Vraska's minus two, and that's a little bit too much value for the soldiers. Alright, so we got to see our Esper Super Friends deck in action. And overall, haven't seen too much of the Gauntlet necessarily, but I kind of felt going into the games that I wasn't necessarily going to be able to use it a whole lot, since against a very aggressive deck, you often don't have time to deploy it, and if you already have a few Planeswalkers in play, it often feels like a win-more effect that doesn't necessarily make a huge difference, and you're maybe better off playing an extra removal spell or just an extra Planeswalker in general. But on the other hand, I was very impressed by Urza Assembles the Titans, so that's probably the main centerpiece for these Super Friends Planeswalkers. Planeswalker decks as opposed to the Gauntlet. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.